I'll say it till I'm blue in the face or the cowbells in Starkville shatter my eardrums. And then I got to start learning how to do it with sign language. But fans truly don't understand how chaotic and crazy the second wave of the transfer portal is about to be following spring practice. And for a multitude of reasons, some are looking to be a part of a national championship contending team. Others are looking for a major payday when it comes to NIL. And a few others are just looking to better their draft stock before they enter the next wave of their careers going up against higher competition. And one team that we did talk about being highly aggressive in adding in a running back this offseason, at least going into the summer months, was Mississippi State. Asked and answered by Jeff Levy because he just picked up the commitment of former South Carolina and Miami of Ohio Red Hawks running back Rashad Amos. How is this a good fit for his offense? And is Amos going to be one of the household names back in the SEC, the conference where it just means more? Let's go ahead and discuss SEC Unfiltered. It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you like the video, hit the comment section. What do you think of Amos? And make sure that you hit subscribe because we're talking SEC college athletics every single day on this platform. Follow me on my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. Follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. Follow us on social media at SEC Unfiltered. We're everywhere and we're going to be everywhere moving forward. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, we got you covered 24-7, 365. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Google Play, Spotify, Apple Music. Make sure that you also are keeping up to date with everything that we're doing over on secunfiltered.com. The number one resource for the number one conference in all of college athletics. So Rashad Amos is back in the SEC. He goes last season to Miami of Ohio. Has really, really solid production. Absolutely exactly what you want. Was one of the best Mac running backs last year. Over 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry. If I'm not mistaken, he also had five games of over 100-yard potential. That doesn't happen if you're not a qualified running back. you got to be someone who can absolutely carry the rock, make sure that you slice and dice through the first and second wave of defense, and then once you get in the open field, be like Rocket Sanders and blast off for a touchdown. And exactly that's what you saw last season for a team like Miami of Ohio, the MAC champions. And when you are a part of a championship team, you're going to garner a lot of interest, especially at the group of five level. Amos did that. Now, here's the best part about Amos. He already has SEC experience. He committed initially to South Carolina coming out of high school. He spent two years in Columbia, wasn't really a good fit, now explodes onto the scene, and now he's coming back to the SEC. Here's the reason why this is a really good deal. Uh, Jeff Levy's offense is primarily run-oriented. People want to go ahead and focus in on Lane Kiffin with the up-tempo passing attack with Matt Corral. You want to focus in on when he was the offense coordinator underneath Josh Heupel at UCF. Go, 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 go. Well, the crazy part about all this, if you actually pay attention to what these offenses are, now in Knoxville and in Oxford, they love running the football. They're not run-oriented. They're very balanced offenses, but there is an aggression when it comes to pounding the rock. And when you have a running back of this caliber, you're going to pound the rock as much as possible. In fact, you could say that Jeff Levy's offense is about the same level as any single Midwest white lady who loves going and running up to the coupon counter whenever it's a Sunday and you get the big newspaper magazines. You know that that's what you're going to get in a Jeff Levy offense. They bring over another quarterback. It's no longer going to be Will Rogers. They're switching up the offense, actually doing it this time in favor of the team with Blake Shapin. Well, a lot of people remember Blake Shapin when he was actually doing a lot of positives in Waco at Baylor. They had a good run game. They had Abram Smith. They also had two other running backs that were averaging over four yards per play. So you want to be able to make sure that your quarterback is as comfortable as possible. And because you have question marks at the wide receiver position, you have question marks at the running back position, you have question marks at tight end, whatever you can do to fortify your offense and turn a few games that are probably going to be snooze fest or you're not going to be the one in favor of those matchups. You're certainly going to at least make things interesting. And this is a very interesting offense that could easily reach new heights and new levels by midseason. Now you have a stable running back room or at least a stable lead running back. You feel confident in your team. You know what else you feel confident in? When you look good. And one thing that I always look good in is Roback. Everyone knows Roback. Well, you don't know Roback. Well, let me tell you a little bit about them if you haven't heard of them before. Performance polos, hoodies, shorts. They're the best fit. They're the best feel. Guys, the summer is right around the corner. We got Memorial Day. We got barbecues coming up. We got 4th of July. We got to celebrate 1776. It's America's birthday. 
But the one thing that we also got to celebrate is the fact that now the weather has decided to completely go on up its, go on its axis. And it leads to concerns about when you're going to sweat. You know what you don't do? You don't sweat when you're wearing any gear made by Roback. You feel good about yourself. It looks good. It's form-fitting. It grills great on your body. It actually feels like you're wearing nothing at times. Don't tell the emperor about that one. But the best part of all is that when you're out in that sweltering seat, you're never going to notice it. I play golf every single weekend. I live in downtown Houston. It is a scorching, murky, just malarkey of what you could only call humidity. And the one thing I don't want to do is have bad backswing with bad back sweat. I'm still going to have a bad backswing. I know my golf game is awful, but I feel good. I feel confident. More importantly, I'm also actually not sweating my entire keister off. And you want to do the same thing. So go visit Roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com for 20% off all performance hoodies, polos, shorts, whatever you see fit. And make sure right now, while you're still able to, the Masters closing down today. Scotty Scheffler, what happens first? He wins his second door or his wife goes into labor. They have the Isaiah Collection. The Isaiah Collection looks great in the spring. It looks great in the summer. It looks great in the fall. Make sure that you stop by Roback.com. Use the promo code SECU to get 20% off your very first purchase today. SECU, look good, feel good, whatever you want to do fit. Make sure you're doing it with Roback, people. Back to what I was saying about Amos. This now fortifies your offense. It gives you a second wind. And let me even said during multiple times throughout the early stages of the likes of Spring football, they need to upgrade the running back room. They knew that they had to bring someone else in because it was barren. Woody Marks leaves. He goes over to USC. You now no longer have your quarterback in Will Rogers that's going to sling it around the yard for 455 yards per game. You got to be able to invent a new identity. And you get somebody that has experience playing in the SEC. Is it little? Yeah, I think he averaged, if I'm not mistaken, little over 200 rushing yards in two years in South Carolina. but. He knows the game. He knows the practice level. He knows what the competition is when you go up against other opponents, whether it be the SEC East, the SEC West, Tennessee, Kentucky. They know the level of competition and the differences between what you'll face on a regular basis. But it doesn't really matter. As long as you have somebody that can make your team feel that much more confident going into the year, that's all you're looking for. When you look at a place like Mississippi State, The goals are not to be a college football playoff contender. Sure, would it be amazing to see the cowbells come ringing like no one's business as you're playing against Ole Miss week 13? Have an opportunity to maybe make it to the college football playoff? Maybe you're this version of Sunny Dykes 2.0 at TCU. Every year we see one team just kind of win over America. Maybe it is the Bulldogs. But for now... You just want to find a culture. You want to find some sustainability. You want to take what was being implemented before the horrific passing of Mike Leach and bring something into your own. Make sure that it's a brand new culture. And more importantly, it's one that you can hold on to well past 2024. And a guy like Amos doesn't have to go pro. You can get him for two years if you want. If he has an exceptional season, that usually means that you had an exceptional season. So let's just say that now you're going from a team that was expected to get five and a half wins. If I'm not mistaken, FanDuel has Mississippi State at 5.5 wins going into the year. And you hit eight wins. You go eight and four. And part of that is because if Amos doesn't drop a beat, he's averaging 6.1 yards per play. Maybe instead of 13 touchdowns, he gets 12 touchdowns. Maybe he upgrades himself when it comes to the passing attack. During his time last year at Miami of Ohio, he was a Good pass catcher, but it wasn't elite by any means. Uh, No touchdowns, but 7.2 yards per play. Maybe it's about 5.5 yards per play, but two touchdowns. So you get 15 touchdowns, and he's a second-team All-SEC player. Well, it shows the offense is working, even when there are limitations in terms of player personnel. Now you just got to upgrade that player personnel. And in the Magnolia State, when you're not going to be considered by Lane Kiffin, you're going to be considered by Jeff Levy. I think this is a really good move overall. You knew you had to go ahead and upgrade the rushing attack. Here's the one more thing I will say when it comes to Starkville. I think you probably want to go add in one more tailback before the start of the regular season. But the good news is you got your lead guy. You got your quarterback. You feel a little bit confident in the wide receiver room or a little bit more relaxed knowing you don't have a game changer at wide receiver. Not the end of the world. The good news is for you, you now have a lead running back. And Amos, 
he may be taken off and he may end up actually being a reason why we're talking about the Bulldogs, not as a playoff dark horse, but certainly one of the biggest risers in the SEC headed into 2025. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe down below, leave a comment telling me your thoughts on what Amos brings to a Jeff Levy offense in 2024. Tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros, everybody about this channel. Follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson, my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. Download the podcast wherever you get your podcast listening systems. And make sure that you're also following us on social media because we're everywhere that Elon Musk is at SEC Unfiltered. And to keep up with the number one content surrounding the number one conference in all of college athletics, you know where to go, people. at. SECUnfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Until next time, folks. Later.